In this video, we're going through my method on creating engaging YouTube introductions that really sets up who you are as a creator and gives your audience an idea of what they're gonna find on your channel. All right, let's get into it. All right guys, we are talking about YouTube introductions. Let me just turn all the lights on. Hey, there we go. We are here in the studio. So I promise I'll do a video that's gonna break down my background, everything that I did to build out my studio. But today what we're talking about is a YouTube introduction. And this video is sponsored by Pixel Film Studios. And I'm gonna be using their plugin called Glitch, which is an effect that I like to use to give the footage kind of that glitchy quality. And if you use code JevonPixel, you'll get 30% off this plugin. It's a popular kind of style to add on to your footage and Pixel Film Studios makes it super easy to tie into Final Cut Pro. But before we get into the computer and start talking about how we're gonna do this editing wise, I just wanna talk about the reason why you need a YouTube introduction on your videos. But before we do that, I just noticed that my background light is missing, one second. There we go. Now it looks like I'm in the mountains or something and there's a fire back there. A little, maybe I'm grilling something, I don't know. So a YouTube intro is that five to 10 seconds that you see towards the beginning of my video. Typically how I do my videos is that I do an introduction, a hook, something that gets you into the video that tells you what you're gonna find in my video, especially for these kind of tutorials. If I was doing like a vlog or something like that, I'd probably do something that's just exciting that's gonna show what the video is about. And then I'll do my introduction. And in my introduction, I like to show you that I'm a filmmaker, I like to do adventure, and I wanna give you a sense of what you're gonna feel on this channel. That's the whole reason why you do one of these intros. It gives your viewer a sense of what they're gonna find when they're watching your videos in a quick five to 10 second little just burst of footage and excitement and energy, really getting someone to feel what your channel is. You only have so many seconds before someone's gonna click off. So you wanna first tell the viewer what they're gonna find in the video, and then second, really give them a sense of who you are and what you're gonna show them to get them excited to watch your videos. So before you even get into editing and you start cutting, you wanna think about what do you want your viewers to walk away from your introduction feeling? So for my channel, I wanna have that sense of adventure. I want you to feel like that this channel is gonna take you outside into some extreme environments and teach you filmmaking and teach you how to be a creator. So what I'm gonna do is find different clips that visually say exactly that. And then also I'm gonna find some music that I think fits my theme. When we're in the computer, you could see I've pulled some clips. I have a shot here with me holding a tripod on a boat. I have me and an elephant. I have a shot of me on the pier with a gimbal. I have some alpacas fighting. That was a pretty cool moment in Ecuador. I just kind of pulled some different clips that I think might cut together to create this cool intro. Now for five to 10 seconds, you really aren't gonna be having that much footage and also it's gonna be cutting quick. So the more shots that you add into your intro, the quicker it's gonna be cut. And you also wanna have this sense of like, boom, 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 boom. You don't wanna bore your audience. You don't want them to click away. The whole game here is getting people excited about your content. So you want to have that sense of like, something big is coming, I'm ready to do this, let's go. The next step is audio, and you wanna find a song. I use Soundstripe for all the music on my channel, and I'll put a link in the description where you guys can check that out, but you just wanna make sure that you have music that's properly licensed for YouTube. So I've already cut down the song into the section that I wanna use, but it is a little long, so this is what I've found so far. So it's got this kind of like tribal feel to it. It has that sense of like adventure to it, but it is a little long. So what I'm gonna do is cut this in half and I'm gonna find a beat where I can cut that it feels seamless. So let's take the first like two to three seconds. And now let's find like the last two to three seconds. Let's trim that down a little bit more. Perfect. So when it comes to music, you really wanna cut on the beat. And you'll definitely feel if the music is off. So if you're cutting at a moment where the beat isn't continued on, 
you're gonna feel this like jarring effect with the music. So this really comes down to, can you make the music seamless? And so you wanna cut on a four count, an eight count, you wanna find those moments where you can cut, and that's how you can move music around and use the intro of one part of the song and the outro of another, and then mix them together. Now, I'm gonna add something to this to make it even better and more dynamic. So on the front half, I have what's called a riser, and that's where the audio builds up. And so I want the audio to build up to that first beat. So what I do is I have the riser kind of building underneath me talking at the intro. So now I wanna also do this on the end. I wanna have some sort of big hit, some final like ending. You can usually use the end of a song, but I also like to find like a deep hit. So this is an effect called deep hit, and we're gonna put this right on that last beat. And when you add this to the music, it just adds a little bit more to that outro, kind of like boom, we're done. Okay, so now I have the audio completely cleaned up, and this is what I like to do before I get into actually cutting the visuals. Obviously, the visuals are the fun part of creating things like this, but you have to make sure that your audio is there because that's gonna help drive what you're gonna do with the visuals. All right, so let's go through these shots. When it starts, I'm gonna cut pretty much on every beat. So I've already marked with a, a marker tool where I want each of these shots to happen. So I can easily just go in here, pull my shots and start cutting them so that they match up. So I wanna end on the shot of me with the camera. Uh, maybe we'll throw the alpacas in here. So as you can see on the markers, I've already filled up my timeline every beat. So it's every boom, 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 there's a new shot. Let's just watch this real quick. You can obviously dial this in and really get in there and make sure that everything's hitting on the beat. But what I wanna do now is make this a little bit more engaging. And that's where Pixel Film Studios effects come in. They have a whole bunch of effects on their website. And the one in particular that we're using for the video and what I use for my introduction is called Glitch. And you'll see this all over YouTube. The whole glitch style is very popular because it really has that like video feel where you just have like the video breaking apart, you have like different colors coming in, pixelation, like it just has this sense of video creators baked into it. And I think that's why a lot of people have turned to this to use it for different elements within their videos. Now with glitch, you have tons of options. And the beauty is you have all of these different filters and each of these filters is completely customizable. So not only do you get a ton of filters with this plugin, but every one of these filters has a whole bunch of tools that when you put it on your footage, you can go through and change the distortion or the pixelation or anything within the plugin to make it your own. And that's the beauty of it, but they make it super simple. So the next step to build my introduction is I'm gonna use this plugin to create transitions between all of this footage. So not only am I cutting on each of the beats, but you're gonna feel the glitchiness and the video effects as it goes through the entire introduction. So how this plugin works is you basically find an effect that you wanna use and you just drag it right on top of your footage. And it's gonna make the effect over the footage that's underneath it. So let's use focus blur. We're gonna put this right here. And I'm just gonna show you how this works. Now that I've put the focus blur on my footage, you have some different effects here. You have the zoom, so you can zoom in, you can add more blur, you can add more grain, you can randomize, you can add some frequency. And really, this is gonna just take tweaking and playing around and finding settings that best work for you. There's no right or wrong way to build an effect using this plugin. It's just gonna be a sense of feel and you're gonna have to play around until you find something that makes sense for you and, and something that you like visually. So in the Glitch plugin, you have access to a ton of different styles of effects. You have what's called data mosh, pixel sorting, digital interference, color channels, overlays, bad signal, displacement, and pixelate. So using these, you can do a ton of different things that combined give you some really interesting effects. Now, like I was saying, you can either drop this on top of your footage as an overlay, or if you have something like a logo that has a transparent background, you can use these as an effect just on the logo. So I'm gonna use a flicker level green artifact and I'm gonna just drop it right onto the logo. And you can see when you have a logo over your footage, it just affects the logo. So two ways that you can work with this plugin. And like I said, I'm gonna drop mine on top of the footage 
and create effects that goes between shots because I wanna mix everything together. So what you do is you pull the effect on top of your footage, you shrink it down to the size that you need between each shot, and what I like to do is take the effects and have it go from one shot to the next. Now you can double these up, put other effects together to create interesting combos, and you're gonna use your controls to tweak these and change them and really make them your own. So using the glitch effect, you can really add a different quality to your footage and it just makes it pop. And one of the really cool things about this plugin is that it is super fast to work with and you're not waiting around for the effect to render. So guys, I will put a link down in the description to glitch where you guys can check that out, more information about it. There's also a discount code you can see here on the screen and it will also be down in the description. So make sure you guys pick that. So make sure you guys pick that up because I think it's an awesome effect to use, not only in your introductions, but in different parts around your videos. Looks like my light has died. I definitely did not charge it enough before I did this shoot. But guys, that's it. So I will see you on the next one.